the furtherance on these videos is uh, based on understanding that people actually are existing in something that they don't even understand how it operates. And when we're dealing with commerce, uh, Caesar's world is very unforgiving. Uh, grace is only a matter of time before you have to pay. But it's not a, it's not a real grace, not a real forgiveness. So uh, what, we're, uh, what we're here on these uh, aspects, or this video, is to actually um, bring us to uh, a comprehension simply on how some categories of how commerce operates in Caesar's world uh, could be understood so that a layman or someone who's just in the beginning understandings of law uh, could uh, comprehend how things exist in the moment and if you know where you are at the present where your feet are now it's a lot easier to move forward but if you don't understand where you are currently uh, then you're you're definitely in a confusion and that's the concern uh, even with the definition of confusion which is merger which is putting two things together that don't belong which has a lot to do with what we consider to be the legal name versus what is the grace name. And the grace name is your Christian name, and it's a given, it's a fact, it has nothing to do with Caesar's world, and Caesar's world requires you to consent to join the two together in order to operate in that legal world so that you're bound by honesty at that point, at least to go forward, to have to comply with what Caesar has asked because he did not demand you to be in there. No one put a gun to anybody's head to participate. You've applied for everything you've ever obtained and therefore required your movement, your motion, and your consent. So all this free men on the land stuff that I've been, I've been duped, I've been this, I've been that, that's a lot of whiny nonsense that I'm not here to give any at all attention to. So uh, videos from these people, Freeman on the land, uh, discard them as fertilizer that should really go outside your house. Because it's uh, nothing more than nonsense and uh, will not help you, uh, will in fact will delay you in understanding of the law uh, because they want to they want to play but they don't want to pay. And you cannot touch something that does not, is not your property that's granted to you and they don't realize that the surname is granted property whether or not the bankers control it as a pledge, as an arms, as a security, it's based on your consent to attach to it. And therefore, if you're attached to it and you hold property, then you owe Caesar money, you owe him tax, and you owe him legal obligation to fulfill whatever he's requiring. But uh, to say that you could uh, claim a right to not do that under some idea that the common law didn't work that way, that's not really the case. It is what it is, and the uh, eminent domain of authority over that property, that is state property, the surname, uh, is, an, is nothing to do with your Christian standing under the fact of your given name and the assurance that Christ Jesus gave you for that name. Difficult journey to go down the other, but if you're playing in with Caesar, you must render on to Caesar what is Caesar's. So if you use anything to do with a surname, a corporation, or anything that has any attachment to something as an artifice that belongs to Caesar, you owe tax. And to do anything other than pay the tax on that would be nothing more than anarchy in the world of Caesar. And he will attack you in any of these groups that say they have a way around that or misleading you and most likely, most likely uh, going to put you into a jeopardy with your, uh, with your existing uh, loved ones because... Uh, they, uh, they basically are not going to be the ones facing the music. It'll be you facing the music, even though they may actually have wonderful, it appears, bursting the bubble videos. These guys haven't bursted anything other than their own ego, and they haven't come to a realization that the information from the law is in front of them to tell them that if they're a participant, then they pay according to participation rules. If you're a non-participant, well, then we have nothing to discuss in this matter. But they want to use something that they believe is theirs, even though they have no proof it's theirs, and then they want to not pay for the use of it. And that's basically violate, violating licensing rules and uh, the obligations that come with the legalities that uh, come.
cover the protection of property. So um, our, our uh, first, uh, you know, beginning on this is, you know, what basically operates people to operate business. Well, the, now worldwide we have social insurance registrations and uh, that again is a voluntary uh, walk-in consent for people. So generally people will get a nine digit number after they've already used their birth certificate, wallet size to go up to the next level and they claim that they're going to basically take the consent and the obligation to actually sign for that obligation uh, whatever could be behind it. They don't even know what they're doing when they're filling it out, but they actually say they're going to be signing. Now, when you sign your surety, so automatically you're taking the highest responsibility when you use a government document that has someone else's signing authority on it and you use it for your own uh, purpose, well, then there could be a concern, an obligation, a risk in that. So to take that, uh, to take that property, uh, use it for a purpose that it may not have been originally uh, placed for uh, could lead into an obligation that could cause something that could possibly work to the opposite. So uh, most people have basically operated uh, as employees or agents uh, um, for an agency that they are not even aware of um, has an obligation based on reporting every year. Uh, it's called a tax return that's returning tax on the use of the property that belongs to another. Next step up from that is sometimes social insurance registrants or people in general may wish to uh, open up a company that does not use the name um, that they uh, basically were birthed with, at least what they assume to be their birth name plus family name, given name and surname. And they take that and they will actually open up a business that would actually be a little bit different from that. Well, that's called a, a sole proprietorship, a master business license. It probably occurs all the way from Canada to the U.S. and throughout most of the uh, uh, European nations and anything else that's involved in democracy. They would have a version of this and that master business license that's obtained in that uh, is, is literally just another name to operate the name that they believe is their birth name. Though both really are secular, the only difference is the trade name that they occur through a master business license is purely understood to be a trade name. So it's strictly for commerce. So it could be John Smith who basically opens up a business as a legal signing authority for a master business license known as John's Plumbing or ABC Plumbing. So therefore he has an ability to operate a business that's separate from that gives be easier to obtain commerce from the world he's surrounded with by focusing in on what he does. So if he was a plumber or an electrician um, or a carpenter, uh, he could put terminologies in the name that would allow people to understand that's what he's focusing on. So that's how John Smith came about originally because it was John Blacksmith. He was really John Blacksmith. It really is a trade name, but because it has his individuality under his given name mixed in, it's not quite 100% trade. It's kind of like half and half. And therefore, uh, uh, it, we, we've allowed, uh, you know, through the idea of common law and trade, the ability for us to create other um, separations away from that so that the individual using kind of a trade name with his family name is now known as something else strictly for trade. <clears throat> so the sole proprietorship or the master business license is that first level. The next level is maybe a corporation and a corporation is really just something where the individual or the one who has uh, the social insurance registration or social security registration name now is only a director of something separate from that, but there's a new person created. It's an artifice, but it's its own person. And this person is only for profit, but it's taxed different, differently under regulations under IRS and the uh, uh, Canada Revenue Agency. So it's just strictly something 
that operates a little different than the individual who's going to go out there and do business under his own name that he has an insurance number on. If the director takes commerce through it or a payroll, he's taxed. If he takes nothing, well then there's no taxable liability on any directors within. The corporation is taxed on its own level of what it produces and how much profit it makes. But it's strictly a for-profit idea. Even though it's really a den entity, a corpus, a corporation, it is what it is. The next level up is a not-for-profit. The not-for-profit basically is set up as a debit that works on seeking out arrangements for for-profit entities. For-profit entities basically produce the profit that the not-for-profit can derive from and subtract. So therefore, one for-profit person on the left with a positive cash flow with a not-for-profit that would seek to debit that out for a purpose for social good. So there are many not-for-profits that are under that. Do not confuse those with those that have charitable tax status. The next not-for-profit is one that actually gives a tax deduction to individuals. They are a not-for-profit corporation, but they mainly concentrate on individuals in the social security program, social insurance program, to give them tax deductions for monies that they give directly to that entity. And they can still receive from for-profit corporations, but the percentage of tax deduction is very low for a for-profit corporation to donate to a charity. It's higher for a for-profit. Uh, it's better for a uh, not-for-profit to receive from just a strictly for-profit corporation because they write that off under just basically their advertising budget. So dollar for dollar, many times in a legal view, it'd be better for a not-for-profit to deal with a for-profit than it would be for a not-for-profit, uh, sorry, for a for-profit corporation to actually give to a charity because they get less tax deduction. So uh, there are advantages, but that is basically how Caesar's world operates. Um, there, there really is nothing, um, I think, going wrong here in the sense of people believing that someone's robbed them or, or taken from them. Our whole system is based on participation and voluntary action. So no one has ever been made to do anything. Anything that the government has on you has been based on your own voluntary participation to give it to them. So uh, therefore, anything you have would, in understanding, have a connection to something that would actually allow someone a jurisdiction over you. And their only way to create jurisdiction is through signing. So therefore, if you've signed for something and now you're claiming you're not going to pay, well, you better read the rules and the regulations that attach to what you signed because it has to lead to law, which law can govern what you have to do or not do. So I would not really want to entertain any at all discussion on an idea that the government's doing something to you that you do not have any legal ramification or uh, retribution on if they violate the laws that are already in place. The laws are there for them and the laws are there for you and therefore if you're in there participating that's the club rules and therefore if you're a member of the club then you must pay your dues. If you're not in there, fine. As far as I'm concerned, uh, Caesar owns everything to do with the money. So therefore, everything to do with the money is already Caesar's anyways. And he has the right to tell you what to do with that money. Because you're using something that belongs to him. And until the return of Christ, <laughs> he's in power. And that's how things operate. And therefore, if you're going down a direction of not being involved in that, you're definitely walking down a faith journey. So if you're taking this book and walking down with only your Christian name, Caesar's not in your way. 
But if you touch what belongs to Caesar, then you owe him his percentage for the use of his property. And therefore, the surname, corporations, anything to do with anything that deals, deals with the art, idea of an artifice or something that is an imagination belongs to Caesar, and therefore you pay tax on it. The question is, could a individual operate without this arrangement? Could he be abandoned from this? That's future videos. We'll talk about that later.